welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Emma. So today I'm going to be talking about why YA or young adult literature expands beyond its name. This is a video essay for my English 210 class. So let's start off with what is YA? So YA stands for young adult, which is a genre of literature, which is aimed at an audience of people between the ages of 12 and 18. It also has a bunch of genres inside itself, like thriller, contemporary, romance, fantasy, etc. So why am I talking about it? YA literature has been the target of a lot of ridicule for very little reason, from random users on Twitter to Jonathan Franzen, the great American novelist. Um, YA has been criticized for its simplicity and for lack of stimulation of the mind and being straight up inferior, which is simply not true. So let's talk about how reading YA can benefit you. Communication is very important in our society and understanding the people around you and who you are communicating with is very important to the whole process. So opening yourself up to new experiences and new perspectives is very important in order to better understand your peers and just other people that you would communicate with. Many people already do this in the type of media that they consume, like TV shows or movies or something like that, but a lot of them don't seem to think about going outside of their age range, just maybe outside of their perspective in their age range, if that makes sense. And while in this video I'm focusing mostly on books, there are other forms of media that have young adult genres like movies and TV shows. Um, some really great examples is the Heartstopper TV show that's coming out um, in like I think a week today. The Shadow and Bones series that came out, was that a year ago already? And The Perks of Being a Wallflower, a great coming of age movie. Am I just now realizing that those are all book to film adaptations? Yes. <laughs> um, but. It still stands, okay? Anyways, young adult. So just because we were all kids once does not mean that we all understand kids now. Um, first off, our memories are not that good. Not always, okay? Second off, generations are growing and changing all the time. And staying up to date with what young adults are going through now can be really helpful and really important in order to communicate with them. Adolescents make up 16% of the world's population and so just making an effort to connect with them is really just about understanding them and sharing our world with them. Heidegger says that thinking must follow the path of language. Speaking reveals our concern for the world and our overall caring for the world and for nature. The path that YA opens for you to expand your thinking is one that you should follow. In the same vein, in a lot of YA novels, more specifically contemporary YA novels, the main character often has a hobby or a specific creative outlet that is talked about a lot in the books. And this is something that I haven't noticed as much in adult books. Um, the main character just doesn't seem to have a hobby as much or one that is focused on in the book. A really great example of characters with a main focus are um, all of Alice Oseman's books. I'm pretty sure in every novel that she's written, um, the main character has some specific interest that is focused on throughout the entire book. And seeing these different main characters with all these different hobbies can be really inspiring and help the readers to try new things. And as someone with various hyperfixations at any given time, it is really helpful to see all these different characters and like what they're interested in because often I'll get interested in that too. It's the reason why I have two different kinds of clay in my closet along with oil paints, acrylic paints, gouache paints, watercolor paints. Like it's all just kind of random stuff that I've accumulated over the years. A lot of it is due to the influence from book characters that I've loved. So now let's talk about what YA does well. The three main topics I'm going to be talking about are death and grief, sexuality, and independence. These are all topics that I've seen YA handle particularly well. Now you're going to squeak. The reason I think the YA genre is apt to handle these topics is because they are really intense things that people go through in many different stages of life 
and sometimes people don't go through them until they are older and reading an adult book about death and grief can be really difficult because you're reading about a character who has probably already gone through this before and is feigning stoicism and is trying to be more hardened and like, no, I can handle this. But when you're an adult and say you're going through a family death for the first time in your life, um, it can be really difficult to try and read an adult novel about it because it's honestly just hard to relate. Whereas in YA, it tends to be more of a conversation and something to talk through. And while in YA books, for example, death and grief aren't always handled well um, by the main character, a lot of times it is worked through. Even though it may not be a super healthy coping mechanism at the beginning, a lot of times they work through that um, to get to a better place. YA just typically makes a lot of topics easier to digest and not because it simplifies them, but because it's more like an introduction when these people are experiencing things for the first time. Another great thing about YA is that it's a good way to try out a new genre. If you've never read horror or thriller before and you want to try it out but are nervous like I was, YA can be a softer introduction to those genres while still deeply haunting. <laughs> For example, you could try House Apollo or The Furies and still be very disturbed. Um, <laughs> but it's a bit softer than maybe Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn or Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. The intensity just tends to differ a little bit. A little side note on House of Hollow though, um, I do not recommend reading this book if you are dealing with the loss of a loved one. The, mm, it's depictions of mourning and its effects on both the living and the dead they're pretty messed up, I would say, and I think that's part of like the thriller horror aspect. But um, yeah, no, it was not something that was fun to read for me personally. Um, that specific section with it, I had a lot of issues with it. Um, so just very much watch out. <laughs> so now into my favorite part. What should you read? We're gonna go by category and yeah. I would also like to say that if you're planning on reading any of these books, please check out the content warnings first because you never know what you might find yourself diving into and it can be really important to protect yourself from something that you may not want to read. So my top recommendation for reading a book about death and grief is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. If you guys have been on my channel for a while, you know that this is my favorite book and I recommend it pretty much any chance I get. Um, this story follows a boy named Bod whose entire family is killed at the very beginning of the novel while he is a toddler and he crawls over to the neighboring cemetery and the ghosts raise him and take care of him and it kind of follows him through that so there's a lot of fantasy aspects and sort of magical realism but you see Bod, this child, growing up with ghosts and growing up with a really healthy concept of death and instead of being afraid of it, just accepting it and um, learning about how it plays a role in the world. Personally, I read this for the first time when I think I was 18 or had just turned 19 and it came at a really great time for me. I was going through the loss of a loved one and just reading about this child having such a healthy relationship with death really made me less afraid of it overall because it's something that I've always had a really big fear of and this book just came at a really great time for me um, and it's also just written really well. And if you are interested, they do have a graphic novel version. It's a two volume thing um, and it's pretty dope. Okay, and so I'm going to quickly recommend a few others and a lot of the books that I'm recommending fit multiple categories as well. Um, so I just wanted to preface with that. Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour, Salt at Sea by Ruta Sepetys. This is a historical fiction set in World War II. II. <laughs> Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Great series for talking about death considering it has a lot to do with it, um, with the mythology that's in there. They go down to the underworld, they talk to Hades, and they're like 
12 year olds fighting against like the biggest threat to the world ever so it can get pretty intense as you can imagine mary ventura in the ninth kingdom by sylvia plath this one is super short i've read it multiple times and i think it's got a really interesting take on death sisters by daisy johnson another one that i don't have with me is a manga and it's i want to eat your pancreas by yoro sumino i read it in like a night <laughs> it was really good so next up sexualities reading about sexuality can be really helpful um, from a YA perspective because a lot of times people are still figuring it out in YA and they don't fully know. YA can be really beneficial for people who figure out their sexuality later in life. The main book that I'm recommending for this one is Loveless by Alice Oseman. This book follows Georgia, the main character, while she is discovering that she is asexual and aromantic. She is just entering college and so she's on the older side of YA. She and her friends are kind of discovering their sexualities while some of them are more firm in them. They're still um, kind of discovering like relationships for the first time. Um, or like this character right here, um, he helps Georgia a lot in her self-discovery. She's struggling a lot though because her entire life she's wanted this big rom-com movie love story and she's realizing like that she doesn't want that exactly. Um, and this also focuses a lot on the beauty of friendship and how important it is in people's lives. And of course for sexuality, I just recommend all of Alice Oseman's novels, uh, Radio Silent Solitaire, well there's Loveless again. Um, I Was Born For This is also a very good one, I just don't have the copy with me. And This Winter and Nick and Charlie are her novellas. Um, great books all around. 10 out of 10. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin O'Leary Sons. Um, this is about two teenage boys that both have names of like great philosophers and they have things that they're struggling with and they help each other out and it's a really beautiful story about friendship that blossoms into something more. This one also focuses a lot on independence and loss um, and it's just a great book in general. Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I also highly recommend On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden, which is a graphic novel, and The Stonewall Riots uh, by Gail E. Pittman. That is more nonfiction. It's talking about the Stonewall Riots, and um, it talks about them through little pieces of like artifacts, I guess you would call them. And finally, Independence. Independence is a big part of YA, because these are people that are discovering themselves and trying to prove themselves as independent and who they are. Um, so the book that I am recommending the most for this is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Cemetery Boys is a story about Yadriel, whose family is part of the Bruhex, which is like, um, they have a sort of magic that relates a lot to the dead. And this story also talks a lot about death. Um, as you can imagine. <laughs> the main issue about the entire story is that Yadriel is a trans boy and in the Bruhex they're a very tight traditional religious household. Throughout the novel Yads is trying to prove himself as a Bruho as opposed to a Bruja and trying to show that he can perform Brujo magic and basically prove to his parents that he is in fact a he no matter what their tradition or their beliefs might lead them to believe. Also for independence, I recommend Dear Martin by Nick Stone. It discusses a lot about the effects of racism and how he's dealing with it. And he writes letters to Martin Luther King Jr. to sort of talk his way through his feelings. It also has a companion novel, Dear Justice. Love Boat Taipei by Abigail Hing Nguyen. Um, this one is about a girl who wants to be a dancer and is in a very strict household where her parents are like, no, you're gonna do this because this is what we planned for you and you're gonna go to this summer camp? I, I don't remember exactly what it is. And she's just trying to prove herself as a dancer. Another great one is A Time to Dance by Padma Venkatraman. Is that her name? In this one, she's trying to prove herself as a dancer when she gets into a car accident and loses part of her leg and she continues to try to prove herself with a prosthetic and it's a beautiful story that is told through verse as well, which is really fun. Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. This is another comic and just Tilly Walden's art is also just amazing. Um, but it is about two people 
um, and one of them is running away and the other one she used to babysit her when she was younger and they're kind of just figuring themselves out on this car ride and at some point they find a cat it's really cute the red queen series and realm breaker by victoria aveyard realm breaker is her newest novel and her newest series this is the only book that's out yet though um but these focus on a lot of characters that are really um strong and independent and uh, want to prove themselves the three dark crown series by kendara blake uh, this one focuses on three queens that are born as queens and basically they have to like kill each other to become the queen by the time they're like 16 or something like that um, it's a whole thing and it's a wild ride um, I loved it very good <laughs> to sum it all up YA is a genre that should be respected in its own right. People should feel comfortable reading YA at any age, and I know that even when I was a teenager, the key audience for YA, I still felt uncomfortable reading young adult books sometimes because I was like, oh, well, I should be reading classics because I have to prove that I'm smart and all that stuff. Um, no. And you know, there are young adult classics too. Picture of Dorian Gray, Little Women, like, great books. Um, but that's not the point of this video. The point is that YA books are good and they're novels just like any other novel. There are good and bad in every genre, in every age range. There's going to be good novels and bad novels. You can't just claim that YA is full of them. If you are a middle schooler, a younger than that child, elementary student, <laughs> Um, a high schooler, college student, graduated from college, or getting your master's, or if you are retired and living your best life, just know that you can read YA books because they're books and they tell amazing stories and it's worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a like and let me know down below what some of your favorite YA books are or if any of these sound really interesting to you and which ones you might want to pick up. I would love to hear about it, just no spoilers down in the comments below, please. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you later. Bye. Bye, video. Bye.